what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, The Other Side of the Door. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. When Maria tells her husband that she is pregnant, he cannot contain his joy. The couple spend the rest of the afternoon by the beach, talking about their future. The husband suggests that they stay in Mumbai and start their family there. As Maria mulls over the decision, a child walks up to the couple, chasing after her ball. The husband swiftly picks up the ball and hands it to her before striking up a conversation in Hindi. He tells Maria that he is consulting with the child about whether they should move to Mumbai or not. Maria looks to the child, waiting for an answer, but is only met with a pointed finger and blood-curdling screaming. A child's face becomes disfigured, with her eyes and skin turning black as blood runs down her face. Finally, Maria wakes up from the nightmare. The following night, the husband comes home from work to find Maria sleeping soundly in bed with the television left open. He grabs the remote to turn it off, but starts crying when he sees an old home video of their family on the screen. When he walks over to Maria, he knocks loose a bottle of pills from her hand. He realizes that Maria has just tried to commit suicide. In a panic, he tries to wake her up, but fails and so calls an ambulance. Inside the ambulance, while Maria is half awake and in a trance, an old memory in her head replays. She sees water rise rapidly inside the car as she tries to pull her kids loose from the seatbelts. She manages to free her daughter Lucy, but finds that her son Oliver's leg is stuck under the seats. Maria tries desperately to free him, but is unsuccessful. With her daughter close to drowning in the rising water, Maria is forced to leave her son behind. When she tries to return to the water to save him, she is stopped by bystanders, and her son is lost to the river. A while later, Maria wakes up in the hospital, with her daughter sleeping soundly beside her. Their housemate comforts her and tells her that she also lost her daughter in an accident. She offers Maria one final chance to meet her son and say her goodbyes to him. The maid tells her about an abandoned temple, where the line between the world of the dead and the world of the living is very thin. There she can meet her son one last time. Maria is instructed to spread her son's ashes on the temple steps and lock herself inside the temple. The maid says, if she follows these steps, Oliver will come to her by nightfall. After Maria is discharged from the hospital, she pays the maid a visit. The maid further tells her that if they are to continue with the ritual, Maria must promise her that no matter what, she should not open the door inside that temple. Maria agrees to the promise, and later that evening, they dig Oliver's body out from his grave. They open his casket, where Maria finds his old stuffed toy. She tries to pull it out from the casket, but is startled when she finds his hands attached firmly to the toy. After that, they huddle around a campfire, and Maria notices some strange men sitting across them. She asks the maid who they are, and finds out that they are the Akhori, a group of cannibals that live near the cremation sites. The maid tells her that they cover themselves in ash, and that they feed on the bodies of the dead to help them communicate with the dead. The next day, Maria boards a train and heads to the temple. After reaching her stop and exiting the train station, she is driven by car to a secluded forest. She treks through the forest and eventually finds the abandoned temple. Soon after, she scatters her son's ashes on the temple steps as instructed and heads back to the temple, taking care to close and bar shut the door behind her. Inside the temple, Maria sits before an altar. She holds a candle in her hands and waits for night to fall. Suddenly, she hears noises behind her. When she investigates, she finds an underground chamber. While looking around, a crow falls dead to her feet and decomposes almost instantaneously before her eyes. As she lifts her eyes, she is startled by a mummified woman holding her face buried in her hands. She runs out of the chamber and back up into the temple in fear. Just as she is getting ready to leave, the candles are blown out and the bells chime. Suddenly, the doors begin to shake vigorously, and Maria hears voices outside. When she asks who is outside the door, there is no response. Then the banging and the voices stop just as quickly as they began. After a moment of dead silence, Maria starts hearing a child crying just outside the door. She calls out Oliver's name and hears his voice call out for her. With the door firmly between them, Maria finally begins to talk to her son. She tells Oliver how much she loves and misses him. After Oliver replies and tells her how much he misses the entire family, she apologizes to him. When Maria tells him how she wishes to hold him tightly in her arms, Oliver tries to open the door, but fails as the door is locked shut from the inside. Eventually, he tells her that he has to leave. In an effort to stop him from leaving, Maria hurriedly opens the door, but finds no one outside. Outside the temple, she calls out for Oliver, but hears only silence. When she turns around to look inside the temple, she finds an Ikori standing behind her, watching her intently. Unsettled by his sudden presence and silence, she runs away. However, back inside the temple, the mummy begins to stir. Meanwhile, in their house, the husband is woken up by the dogs barking. He opens the door, hoping to see Maria return from her trip, but finds nothing. 
When he shuts the door, the dog begins barking furiously, clearly agitated by something that the husband cannot see. The next morning, Lucy is playing with her dolls when she hears tapping just outside her door. She starts looking for the source of the tapping sound and finds Oliver's stuffed toy on top of the staircase. She climbs up the stairs and grabs the toy, but hears noises from inside her brother's room. Slowly, the door begins to slide open. When Maria finally returns, her husband hugs her tightly. At night, after the couple cuddle, Maria turns over to the other side of the bed and is surprised to see the dog standing there. After showing the dog out of the bedroom, she goes to Lucy's room. Inside Lucy's room, Maria begins to see a figure behind the curtains, but finds nothing when she opens the lights. The following morning, Maria finds Lucy playing in Oliver's room alone. She tells Lucy to play elsewhere. Just as they are about to exit the room, the toy chest behind her is knocked over. When she walks over to clean the mess up, Maria becomes disturbed when she sees Oliver's name spelled out by the wooden alphabet boxes. She leaves the room and heads downstairs to find Lucy playing the piano. However, Maria is startled to see Oliver's stuffed toy on top of the piano. She stops Lucy's playing and asks her where she got the toy. But she is spooked by the piano that continues to play. Lucy tells her that Oliver has returned. Later that night, Lucy tells her that Oliver is hiding from someone and that she shouldn't tell their father that Oliver has returned. Maria heads over to Oliver's room and tucks his stuffed toy in bed. Suddenly, a book flies off the shelf. The lights suddenly turn on and a chair is pulled next to the bed. Maria picks up the book, sits down on the chair and begins reading a bedtime story inside the empty room. After falling asleep, Maria is woken up by a nightmare of the mummy in the temple. The next day, the family finds all the plants and even the fish in the pond are dead. They head to the sea at Lucy's request to bury the fish. At the docks, Maria sees a dark figure in the distance. She turns around and is startled by an Ikhori standing closely behind her. He smears ash on her forehead and chants a prayer. She hastily picks up Lucy, and they leave in a hurry. They encounter a car crash on the street, but quickly run away when the dead body moves to face them. In the evening, Oliver appears outside Lucy's room. When Maria gives Lucy a bath, she finds bite marks on her shoulder. Lucy tells her that she now hates Oliver because he was mean to her. Maria heads to Oliver's room to scold him, but he asks her to read a story. When she leaves, Oliver appears beside her. She finally agrees, but tells Oliver that he has to be nice to Lucy. After leaving the room, Maria hears noises. She opens the front door and finds an Ikhori chanting prayers again in the rain. She walks out to confront him, and threatens that she will call the police. He remains silent, but points behind her. She turns around, only to see the mummy behind her. Maria starts running away, but is chased by the mummy. She escapes and runs back to the house. There, the maid tells her that the spirit she has brought back from the temple is not Oliver. She tells him that Oliver will never be able to reincarnate because Maria has brought her back to his previous life due to her opening the door inside the temple. She tells Maria that his soul has decayed and that he has become evil. She informs Maria that the mummy haunting her is actually Mevtu, the god of the underworld, who has come to bring back Oliver's soul. So she instructs Maria to burn and dispose of anything that may keep Oliver's spirit attached to this world. However, Maria disregards her advice and runs to Lucy's room, where she finds Lucy crying. She reaches out her hand to comfort her, but hears Lucy's voice behind her. She turns around and sees Lucy standing beside her. When she turns back to the bed, she finds only a terrifying figure with a contorted face. While talking about leaving the country the next day, Maria starts seeing cockroaches everywhere. She suddenly notices Lucy missing from her side. She runs out in a panic and runs down an alley, where she finds Mia too, who starts chasing her. Maria tries to run, but is frozen in fear. Fortunately, she hears her husband calling out to her, and he appears with Lucy in his arms. Back at home, the maid begins collecting Oliver's belongings and dumping them out onto the courtyard in a heap. When she goes to collect more of his things, a hand suddenly grabs hers. Immediately, the dog starts barking, and the door slams shut, the lock sliding firmly into place. Eventually, the lock slides open, and she is able to leave the room. As she rushes to light his things on fire, Oliver, under the guise of Lucy, emerges from the pond behind her. When she turns around, she doesn't see anybody and tries again to light the match. Her daughter's voice calls out to her again, prompting her to walk to the pond, where she reaches out to grab a red ribbon floating on the surface. Shortly after, the family arrives home. They find the heap of Oliver's belongings and look around the place. Maria walks in the pond and sees the maid dead. It is revealed that Oliver drowned the maid. At night, Maria finally burns Oliver's things. As she is outside, Maria is called back to the house when she hears the dog barking in Lucy's room. She checks Lucy's bed, but finds it empty. She eventually finds Lucy outside, swinging on a tree swing just outside the house. Just then, the husband arrives home and finds that Maria has burned all of Oliver's things. 
Maria then tells him the entire story of how Oliver came back from the dead, and how they had to burn his things, so that he could finally rest in peace. Maria tells Lucy to tell her father how she played with Oliver before. But Lucy acts ignorant and denies everything. When Maria forces Lucy to tell the truth, her husband pulls Lucy away and brings her to her room, believing that Maria has gone crazy. In Lucy's room, Maria is trying to convince her husband, and she realizes that Oliver has possessed Lucy's body. She tries desperately to get Oliver to leave Lucy's body, but ultimately fails, and the husband locks her alone in the room. As the husband leaves the house with Lucy, he is stopped by the Ikhori standing outside his house. He hurries back inside and calls the police. While the husband is on the phone with the police, the dog approaches Lucy and starts growling at her. So she pulls a knife from the counter and kills him. Her father returns from the call and sees her with a knife in her hands, while covered in blood and the dog motionless at her feet. Confused by her sudden violent behavior, he walks to her but gets stabbed in the stomach, still not realizing that Oliver has truly possessed Lucy. As he lays on the floor, Oliver finally tells him that he really has possessed Lucy's body. Meanwhile, Maria finally escapes from Lucy's room. She sees the windows open and hurries down the stairs, revealing the Akori standing behind her. Suddenly, she hears Lucy screaming from upstairs and rushes to her. She follows her screaming to Oliver's room, where she finds Lucy restrained on the floor, with Akori standing all around her. Because Oliver's spirit is bonded with Lucy's body, his spirit cannot be removed from the body. This means that the Akori must sacrifice Lucy's body to get rid of Oliver's spirit. Maria tries to interfere with the ritual, but is blocked by one of the Akori. As this is happening, Mia too appears and crawls slowly toward them to reclaim Oliver's soul. Just as the blade is about to land on Lucy's head, the husband appears from behind and stops the Akori. Oliver, through Lucy, tells Maria that he is afraid to go back. In order to protect Lucy, she tells Oliver that she will come with him. So Oliver leaves Lucy's body and enters Maria's body before she is immediately stabbed by the Akori. As she falls to the floor, her body enters the spirit dimension. Mia too walks slowly toward her and grabs her by the head. She reveals her face, which contorts and consumes Maria and Oliver's soul, bringing them both back to the world of the dead. When Maria finally wakes up, she hears her husband's voice calling out to her. Feeling something beneath her, she finds ashes. She stands up and notices that she is back at the temple's steps. As the husband's voice relentlessly calls out her name, Maria finally realizes that he is attempting the same ritual, which she did to bring Oliver back. Maria screams at him, pleading with him to keep the door closed. But he opens it, starting the same curse once again. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.